Hey everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and I want to talk to you today about some of the attack, the network attack trends that we have seen during the course of this coronavirus pandemic. Uh, it's very interesting, our, our F5 Silver Line Security Operations Center, or our SOC, um, has noticed a lot of different patterns and, and trends and things during, specifically during coronavirus. So I wanted to share that. So during the first half of 2020, uh, it's been a crazy year, uh, they have noticed a 37% increase in uh, DDoS attack vectors that have been used compared to the same period last year. Uh, and, it's, and it's also interesting because back in January, there was actually about a 17% decrease in the number of attack vectors used. But, launch, uh, but starting in February and kind of moving through the first half of 2020, uh, we've seen about a 57% increase in attack vectors that have been used. So fascinating stuff. You know, there's always attacks going on uh, around the world of web applications. Um, and so we just wanted to, to share like what we've seen in terms of, um, you know, trends and, and all that. All right, so several different attack vectors uh, that I'll mention here. Um, CLDAP is one of them. Uh, DNS, I'll put that up there. And then SNMP, uh, those are three of the really common ones that we've seen during the first half of 2020. And, uh, and most of the attacks that we've seen include multiple attack vectors, which consumes more bandwidth and it's just a more, you know, it's just a, it's just a, a larger, larger effect in terms of the attack. So um, while each of these is a different technology specifically, the nature of the attack is, is effectively the same with each one of these. So kind of what happens is you've got an attacker um, over here that typically controls uh, what I'll call a botnet, and I'll put dot, dot, and then there's that. So let's say that they control all these different bots in a botnet, and then they're coming after you know, the victim web application over here, and they will utilize these vulnerable servers on the internet and most specifically, CLDAP servers, DNS, SNMP servers. And effectively what they do is, let's say you have, you know, I'll just put them right here, CLDAP, um, DNS, SNMP, uh, they'll use like NTP is another one, uh, the memcache, there's, there's, uh, there's several of them, but these are some of the really common ones. So effectively what happens is, because these uh, utilize the UDP protocol, and it's a connection-less protocol, the attacker can take advantage of that and say, hey, I'm gonna send in all of these requests to, I'm just gonna put a whole bunch of <laughs> lines here because it's, it's all of these net uh, you know, computers, all these bots in the botnet, sending multiple requests to all of these different types of, or all these different you know, vulnerable servers. And they, there may be multiple sealed app servers, multiple DNS servers, that whole thing. But, the, uh, but what happens is they send in a request and the request is typically very small uh, it's, it's just not a very large, you know, amount of data that it takes to send in the request. But then the response coming out of these things is, is amplified, like huge. Sometimes, you know, 10, 50, 70, 100 times larger than the request. You know, so if you send in, if you, send in a, you know, a one kilobyte request, you may get a 100 kilobyte response. And so... What the, what the attackers will do is they will spoof the source IP address of these requests and they'll use the, the IP address of the victim so that then when these different uh, you know, servers respond to the request, they're not responding back to the attacker, they're utilizing uh, the, the IP address that was placed in the source IP address field of the request. And so when they respond, they come back here uh, to the victim to then, you know, say, hey, I'm going to flood you with all of these responses. And of course, the victim in the, mean, in the meantime is like, wait, why am I getting all these responses? Um, and the answer is because the attacker sent requests on your behalf, right? Um, so so this, is, this is not good. And frankly, some people have said, hey, well, why are there so many like CLDAP or DNS or whatever servers out there that will do this? And there's a whole host of reasons for that. Some people just don't uh, configure these things properly. Sometimes people just, you know, they, they use the configuration instructions and they never really go through the security part or maybe the instructions never really said, hey, make sure you lock these things down. Or maybe they had like, 
you know, somebody was breathing down their neck saying, hey, get this, get this up in like the next 10 minutes, you know, because we got to have it like right now. So like, okay, let me just get it working and I'm not worried about security right now. Uh, so any, I mean, there's a whole host of reasons that these are out there and vulnerable and open to be used in these attacks. Um, but of course, the attackers take advantage of that. So we've seen a lot of these amplification attacks uh, against victims during coronavirus uh, time, and they're using all of these different attack vectors. A couple of other ones that I'll mention are TCP uh, SIN floods and TCP ACK floods. So these are not UDP type floods, right? These are TCP, so which are connection-based uh, protocols. So a TCP SIN flood is where the, the attacker will say, hey, victim server, I'm going to send a TCP SIN request, and then they're going to respond with the SIN ACK, but the attacker never completes the three-way handshake with that final ACK, that final acknowledgement. And it leaves the server saying, hey, I got I to gotta keep this connection open until I hear that final, you know, until I receive that final acknowledgement. Um, and when the attacker does that many, many, many times, so there's all these SIN, you know, requests without that final acknowledgement, it leaves the server... Uh, basically flooded with all of these what's called half open connections or you know sin flood type connections where it's like I, I can't do anything else because I'm waiting on that that final act and it just consumes resources. Um, likewise a TCP act flood is again in that TCP uh, connection the, the, the browser or the user <clears throat> and then the server you know as they talk via TCP Let's say, the, let's say the user requests like an image off of a web page or whatever. Well, the truth is that when that image is sent from the server, all the different packets are going to arrive at the browser uh, probably not in order. You know, So the browser is going to have to kind of re-put all that together in order. And once it does that, it's going to send back an act, an acknowledgement back to the server that says, hey, hey, I got your image, I got the picture, it's all in order now, everything's looking good, whatever, right? Um, so the truth is an ACK packet could be sent from the user back to the server, uh, frankly, at any time and, you know, to say, hey, I'm, you know, I've got what I need, whatever. And so what, these, what the attackers will do is they will, <clears throat> they will utilize that and they'll say, hey, I'm just going to send a bunch of acknowledgments back to the server and the server's not going to know what to do with them because they're acknowledging kind of nothing really. And the server's like, say, hey, what, what's going on here? What are you acknowledging? And so it just, it consumes resources on the server. <clears throat> so the server gets loaded down and that's, that's the nature of that attack. All righty. And then the last one that I'm going to mention here is a DNS uh, query flood. So a query flood. And what this one does is, let's say that a user is going to like example.com, right? And they, they send the request and it hits a DNS server and the DNS looks it up <clears throat> and responds and says, hey, uh, here's example.com. Here's the IP address for that fully qualified domain name, right? The way that DNS works. Well, what, what attackers will do is they'll say, hey, rather than, ex rather than request example.com, let's request, you know, 123.example.com. So they'll randomize these, you know, characters and numbers and all that stuff as like a subdomain in front of the you know, domain name. Uh, well, what that causes the DNS server to do is say, hey, I don't know, um, I, I don't know 123.example.com because it doesn't exist, but they have to search all of their DNS records to figure out that does not exist. And they finally respond with an NX domain response, which means non-existent domain. It's like that domain does not exist. Well, let's say the attackers send a ton of those. It's not just 123.example.com, it's you know, 124, 125, whatever. <clears throat> it just over and over and over. And it consumes the resources of the DNS server. Uh, this one, this, this uh, attack is typically um, launched against hosting providers uh, because hosting providers don't typically have the full control or the full knowledge of every single record on all these servers, right? So they, they're, they're kind of left with like, hey, this could very well be a legitimate request. I just don't quite know but it causes them to go through all of those, uh, those checks, whatever. So it floods and causes, you know, lots of problems, right? All right, so the Silverline SOC, based on all this stuff, they've got some recommendations like adding or configuring firewall rules uh, for traffic that is sourced from the most common attack vectors. And so you need to block the most common amplification vectors like SNMP, like NTP, like CLDAP, those kinds of things, especially if that traffic 
is not expected on your protected network. Uh, so you, you just block it there at the firewall. So anyway, uh, Silverline SOC is always standing by ready to help. They've got other recommendations if you want to contact them. They can, uh, you know, certainly if you're under attack or just want to know more about how all this stuff works, they're, uh, they're always there to help. So they do a great job. So, hey, we just wanted to bring you these attack trends that we've seen that are kind of unique uh, during this coronavirus pandemic with people working from home and launching all kinds of different attacks now, whatever. So these attackers are, uh, they're always up to something. And the question is, what are they up to like right now? And let me kind of stay at the cutting edge of this so I can, uh, so I can stay, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, either ahead of it or at least in the know of what's going on today. So I hope you've learned something here with this Lightboard lesson. Hey, if you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.